This Pioneer Field Agronomist Scott Everskirt with a weekly agronomy update for April 15, 2019. We're in a field here today in southwest Illinois, and this field really represents a, a lot of the fields across southern Illinois. You see a lot of green, you see a lot of winter annuals, just a lot of weeds out in these fields that uh, some of these fields have kind of gotten away from us a little bit. Here in this, this spring's getting delayed a little bit by the moisture, by the rainfall we've been getting. So as you think about how you're going to get these fields under control and get them prepped for planting, just a couple helpful hints. So as you think about products like Paraquat, Germoxone, or using glyphosate as a burn down, some things you can do to enhance those products a little bit. So Germoxone or Paraquat specifically, uh, make, make sure you're trying to put something like an atrazine going to corn or maybe a metrobuzin if you're going to beans. That photosynthetic inhibitor will really enhance the activity of that product, get some crop oil in there with it, really heat it up and you'll do a really good job of killing these weeds. Some of the grasses that in some of these fields, like the little barley, uh, the bluegrass, things like that, obviously the glyphosate type products will try, probably do a little better job. Uh, but again, products like that, make sure you're using a residual with it uh, to kind of not only kill what's there, but kind of hold things back. Uh, you never know how long that this planting delay is going to last. Second thing is, as you look at 2,4-D, obviously 2,4-D is going to be a great product to throw in a tank in a lot of these applications. The thing you got to watch is your plant back restrictions, especially the soybeans, but obviously the label will have a plant back restriction for corn as well. Uh, that, that's 7 to 14 days. So watch those labels closely as you're, you're applying products like 2,4-D and, uh, and consequently going to be planting basically as soon as we can now uh, after the weather clears up, hopefully right after Easter. The other thing to think about these fields as they're greened up, they've been uh, pretty attractive for the cutworm moths as they've been flying in. From the University of Illinois, we're seeing counts that are pretty, pretty high. And then based on those counts and when they're happening, what we're kind of expecting is that May 10th time frame is when we could start to see possibly some feeding happening in the cornfields. And that's going to coincide pretty close. If we'd start planting corn, say, next week with kind of where uh, the, the plants would be pretty vulnerable coming out of the ground to some cutworm feeding. So, so think of that, plant accordingly. If you want to use a preventive type insecticide out there or, uh, or basically be scouting and be ready to treat uh, if we do get those black cutworm infestations. Across Southern Illinois, we have seen a little bit of corn get planted, especially as we went south. Uh, we got into down to Jackson County, a little bit further south. Uh, several acres got planted down in that part of the world, but really not a lot of corn acres planted really uh, really on the west side of Southern Illinois and anywhere else. So definitely, uh, definitely this delay is kind of getting to everybody. But again, as we do get back into the field, and, and we will, we always plant corn, but uh, remember safety because everybody's going to be in a hurry. Everybody's going to be running some long days and long nights as we do get back. Uh, but definitely keep uh, safety at the front of your mind. Uh, we all know, we've all heard the stories, it only takes five or ten seconds to change your life forever. Uh, so please, please be careful out there. As always, if you have any questions, uh, please contact your local Pioneer rep. Thanks. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.